just a roll call to start the meeting. So, um, Linda Kacos. Here. I'm awesome. Uh, Rodney Kunath. Hi, Rodney. Um, Kathy Mary. Here. Amy Sugihara. Here. Marilyn Claire. Here. And Counselor Jim. Jeremy Dubs. Here. <laughs> Hooray. Um, okay, so first thing is public comment. If any members of the public have comments. Happy New Year. That's my comment. <laughs> back at you. Yeah. Um, ben. Hi. Um, I have two announcements from Forbes Library here. One is that this Friday at 3 p.m. we have our Accessibility Advisory Board meeting. It is open to any who wish to attend. Um, but, you know, we discuss many of the same things, types of things you discuss here, except on the very small scale of the library. But we want to make the library as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. And your feedback is very helpful for that. Um, somewhat related to that, I'm also very pleased to announce that our library of things are non-traditional library materials that circulate. Um, now has a portable FM assistive listening um, system. Um, so that can be used for any kind of meeting, film, et cetera, where you want to um, help uh, make it more accessible for folks who are hard of hearing. The system has um, four receivers that can be used with either headphones, they're in the kit as well, or neck loops that work with the telecoil and a lot of hearing aids. Um, and it has an FM transmitter. We ship it with um, a microphone that, so you can just plug in and amplify a single voice with that microphone, but there's also a mixer. So if you have um, a more complicated audio setup with multiple speakers or with an audio visual system, you can connect that as well, though. We don't supply all of that. We just have the mixer for you to plug into. Um, but we're hoping that that will really help. Um, I know that a lot of assistive listening systems are tied to a particular space. You know, they're installed in a room. And if you end up having your meeting rescheduled for someone else or somewhere else or have a meeting um, in a location that doesn't have it installed, it can... Um, be really nice to have something available that um, is not tied to a group. So this hopefully can be that. Um, I will also mention that while there are only four receivers in the kit, um, they are the same type of receivers that Forbes Library is using for all the assistive listening systems that we have here in the library. Um, so not always, but sometimes with advanced planning, we might be able to make more receivers available if um, someone needed to borrow that kit but needed more than four receivers. And that is my public comment. Very cool. Thanks. Um, any other comments? OK. Um, so the next thing is approval of previous minutes from December 12th. Um, is there a motion to approve? My motion. Great. <laughs> I'll second. Um, and um, let's see. Amy and Sugihara, do you agree to this motion? <laughs> I do, yes. Great. Uh, Councillor Dubs? Yes, I do. Kathy Murray? Yes. Marilyn Claire? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. What? I didn't catch if. Yeah. Great. 
Rodney Hunath. His name didn't come up in the captions. You might want to say it oh. again. Rodney Kuna, do you agree to the motion? He's shaking his head yes. Great. Um, okay, the next item is to recognize um, that Jeremy has moved from serving us as our chair to city or be our appointed city councilor um and just thanking jeremy for almost five years of being on the commission and continuing to be on the commission as our counselor um which is so exciting thank you um and marianne isn't here but i was also hoping that we could recognize her and her many years of service to our commission. Um, but maybe Keith, we could like write her a letter. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, I She told me she would not be able to make it um, today, but um, I think that'd be nice. So, you know, um, we can take notes now, or if people want to send me things, um, or if anyone wants to draft something, um, that'd be very helpful. Cool. Great. Cool. Thank you so much for that, Emma. I'm really excited to be going from chair to being the counselor on the on the on the commission now. It's uh, I'm really excited about it, and um, I'm hoping hopefully we're going to get a lot done. I'm excited to get to work. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, does anyone have anything they want to say for a uh, thank you for Marianne, or should we just email Keith or thank yous for the letter? I I did ask. Um uh the city clerk how long um councilor barge is on the commission i haven't heard back um but it's at least uh, i've been doing this for four years so it's more than that um yeah. but she's been uh very supportive of, of things here in, in the city council so it's been really nice yeah i think a letter is a great idea amy um thanks i'd i'd love to um send some thoughts via email to you keith to pass on if you could put stuff together if other people want to do that too um to send on to council the barge um and um i also wanted to add in my gratitude to you jeremy for being at the helm for years at the disability commission and doing such an awesome job and Thank you so much for all of your hard work and service. And oh, thank you, thank you. So glad we get to been a pleasure. <laughs> work together. Yeah, I'm so excited that we're still that we're, I'm still on the commission. You know, <laughs> it's, it's going to be great. That was one of my, one of the things I was most hoping for when I became counselor was that they would appoint me to this commission. So <clears throat> I consider it a, a big big win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, the next thing on the agenda is to vote on new officers. Um, Keith, I don't know, am I allowed to facilitate the vote, like the voting? Uh, I don't see why not. Um... There, we don't have a vice chair at the moment, so you're, um, I guess, um, I don't know who would be next in line, but uh, I, I don't see why not. Okay. Um, so the first vote is for a new chair. Um, Amy has been nominated at, for the position. Um, and I don't know, are there any other nominations for chair?
great. <laughs> um, do I'm sorry, do a motion for Amy to be chair and then vote that way? I think you just take a um, she's the only nominee, so I think you just do a roll call vote and then people can either vote in favor, they can oppose, or they can abstain. Great. Okay. Um, we'll start with uh, Linda. Yes, Amy for chair. Great. Um, Kathy Mary. Yes. Great. Rodney Kuna. Yes. Great. Marilyn Claire. Yes. Um, Councillor Dubs. Yes. Does Amy vote? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Amy Sigara? <laughs> sure, I'll vote yes. <laughs> Great. And I also vote yes. So. I think that's a unanimous vote. So yay, Amy, for a new chair. <laughs> yay. Very good. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Excited yeah. for the opportunity. I think it'll be great. You're so well spoken on our behalf. I'm sure on not our behalf also. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I've been nominated for vice chair, but are there any other nominations for vice chair? Okay, um, so I guess we'll vote um, for me, Emma, <laughs> uh, Vice Chair um, Linda Akekos. Yes, uh, you, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kathy Mary. Yes. Rodney Kuna. Yes. Marilyn Claire. Yes. Amy Sugihara. Yes. Um, Councillor Dubs. Yes. Great. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, I'm excited. Um, okay. The next thing on the agenda is um, discussing having representation on the Human Rights Commission for Northampton. Um, Keith, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. I believe I sent an email out and just kind of facilitating if you have any questions. When I sent the email out, um, we kind of pull them and, and send them back to either the uh, mayor's office or to the um, health um, commissioner. Um, but basically, um, the mayor would like um, a representative of the Disability Commission to be on the Human Rights uh, Commission. Um, so right now, the Housing Partnership uh, similarly has members of the planning board on the Housing Partnership. The CPC has members of the Housing Partnership on it, um, and the Housing Partnership also has, um, you know, uh, a member on the um, Housing Authority uh, board. So this kind of cross-reference having representation um, throughout different boards, um, or a voice of a you know a subset committee uh, of the community is something we do, um, and um, so. Uh, right now, the, the Human Rights Commission hasn't uh, been meeting, um, uh, but, uh, you know, maybe by spring, uh, they'd have their uh, running again. Um, 
So, I mean, human rights, uh, it's, it's a very broad topic. Um, I have never been to one of the meetings, but, um, you know, I, I think uh, at least for this conversation, you know, if people are interested, um, you know, we can definitely facilitate some uh, questions. Um, um, but, you know, I think um, ideally the, you know, would want to, you know, have a nomination and kind of vote on them, not this meeting, but uh, maybe the following meeting. Um, so if there's questions, I can take them down. Uh, I'm not the best person to kind of answer them. Unfortunately, the health commissioner couldn't um, be at this meeting. Um, so is anyone interested? I have a thought if that's okay, yeah. Emma. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I have another um, meeting on the, what is it, the third Wednesday of every month that conflicts with that time. Um, but I feel like it's a really important uh, role to include disability rights in human rights. And so um, I'm really hoping that from our group, someone is willing to step forward or gosh that's horrible language isn't it <laughs> <laughs> someone is willing to uh, be the representative from our commission to be on the human rights commission so um i would encourage someone to 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 do that for us on our behalf i know it's another meeting and I, you know, um, I don't know what it's like. I haven't been to any of those meetings, but um, I do think it's really uh, very important. And I and I know people behind the scenes worked hard to make this happen. Um, is it okay to put yeah, something on the spot? Thank you, Amy. That's great. Can, can is it okay to put someone on the spot or not? Please. <laughs> Linda, I'm wondering if you would be willing to do this for us. The problem is my uh, term with the Disability Commission ends in June. Oh, and and what were your plans? Or you don't have to answer that, but if you're, you know, if you know you're not going wanting to continue, then, um, well, then we could find someone else at that point. Or if you wanted to continue, then. Well, I've already been four years before how many how many times can you keep going on a commission i actually don't know does anybody know that i don't know i think if, i think it's just it's, it's up to you i don't know i, I think there's no limit because someone on the housing partnership has been there almost as long as i've been alive so. as long as you've been alive yeah <laughs> <laughs> well don't go anywhere <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's up to you if you wanted to, to oh. serve again. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. No, I don't want to be on the uh, other committee. What was it again? The human like, rights. I prefer the disability. Well, you would uh, you'd be the representative of the disability commission on the human rights commission. So, so you'd still be on the disability. Yeah. So there, oh. um, you know, you would attend human rights commission meetings. And then you know you'd be the the voice of the disability um, commission, the disability uh, community for the city, um, and there might be some kind of back and report, not reporting, but you know there's some conversations if something that comes up within the human rights commission is relevant to the disability commission or vice versa. Um, I think it's uh, I wouldn't say it's a facilitator role, but it's definitely a uh, way to you know be the voice uh, of the disability uh, committee or uh, community. Uh, can I throw out a different name than mine? Kathy Murray. <laughs> <laughs> it's like tennis. <laughs> <laughs> it is like tennis because I was going to nominate you also, Linda. So <laughs> yes, I'm, a, I'm very impressed. <laughs> Well, uh, I don't even know anything about that committee, so who could tell me? Keith? Or maybe Marilyn Labarge. We could learn more and share information with you. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I think if, if 
and Keith, correct me if I'm getting this wrong. I think it's kind of a point of contact and kind of the 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 the, the sharing. It's the sharing of information. So, um, you know, whoever is doing it would bring any information back from the Human Rights Commission to our Disability Commission meetings, and it might be like a one minute update or a three minute update, or to say there's really nothing to report. We didn't. We didn't have a meeting this month or, you know, something like that. So Did it's you do Zoom meetings also. Yes, they do. Oh. Yes. Can you I think about to, this, please? Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, Sarah Linda. Can I think about this? Oh, yeah. Okay. I think we're just conversation, having a conversation right now. There's some um, questions I don't know, uh, which is most of them. I can get back to um uh, point of contact. Um, and then, you know, I think in the next month, we would like to have some nominations or, um, you know, some maybe some deeper conversations about it. Good idea. Thanks for considering it, Linda. You think you're welcome. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeremy. I was also going to mention that, um, we have two vacancies on our commission now, and that at some point, hopefully, one one or both of them will be filled. And um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm just saying that in general to think about that in terms of of uh, when we're talking about this. Yeah, that we hopefully will have two new members soon. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I don't. I hope this isn't too forward. Uh, but when I was on the committee in the uh, early two thousands. Uh, Barbara Black was on the committee and being blind, that was very helpful for the committee. But I don't know how you go out and say, would a blind person like to uh, apply? Maybe so, if someone knows one, they could, you know, someone like that, they could suggest it. Yeah, I agree with you that it's sort of a difficult thing to recruit a specific person. I mean, you don't want to, you want to honor their position, but also not tokenize. Yeah. Um, yeah. She got a lot done, though. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> um, shall we move on? Or are there any more questions about the Human Rights Commission? Um, I was just gonna ask, sorry, uh, Keith, yeah. do, do you know like when we need to nominate by or have the have the vote by? Um, we don't have a specific date, but um, sooner is always better than later. And, you know, we only meet once a month. So, um, you know, definitely um, I'll try to get some more input um, and get it out to everyone um, so it's a little more clear. But if there's definitely more questions, please send them to me. And then, you know, we probably want to have it on the agenda next time to either discuss and nominate. Um, and then, you know, obviously um, being nominated the first, that meeting, you don't want to vote on it. You want to give the person some time. So. Great. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, we'll move on to the um, application for variance from 41 Strong Avenue, which Keith sent out to everybody. Um, and Keith, what do you need from the commission in terms of the variance? So um, two months ago now, maybe three months, we had a conversation about the process. I think that was really good. Um, you know, I think I think we kind of landed on not rushing the conversation um, and, you know, discuss, having a more have a broader discussion. Um, so I sent out the document that I was given. Um, I'll just, I can 
it's 17 pages. It's not a lot of reading, but I can just kind of summarize it um, briefly and then kind of open it up to discussion. But so I received it on December 13th after our last meeting. And this is for 41 Strong Avenue. So unit one, um, and it's an existing building, so it's not new construction. And this has the dispensary there, Bishop's Lounge and Molino's. So it's the dispensary that is making the um, the variance. And uh, so process-wise, they send they send these variance requests to us, and we can come on comment on it, or or not. Um, and um, so they there was multiple back and forths with this applicant to the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board. The Access Board kind of kicked back some of their designs didn't like it so um this current proposal that i sent you basically they put out four different options and you know if you read it they're you know basically saying option one is the only one the other three are you know in their words not um feasible um and so option one um it says it would be it it says it would have access to people with disabilities um, to the condominium units uh, and basically it would have a custom built shed or not shed, but a ramp that could be rolled out um, at the request, um, like a buzzer basically outside the door. Um, uh, and so that I don't want to get, I don't know if it's helpful to get into other proposals, but basically, you know, the candidate is, or the applicant is saying, you know, option one is the only one that we think is valuable, viable. Um, so, you know, we have the opportunity to make comments uh, and send it to the Architectural Access Board. Um, so you know, they just want our commentary as the commission. Yeah. Um, and they've, both the app, my my uh, dealings with them, the applicants or the um, the AAB, um, they've not been helpful to give me information on what what we need to do. But definitely, we can make comments, and then uh, that can either you know help them understand the process. But I'll open up to you guys, really. Um, Jeremy, I'm wondering if you want to give some context to sure. all of this since we've been the most involved. Okay, yeah. I, some of you may remember me talking about this building before. Yeah. Um, it, the, the, can't, the, um, the dispensary that's there now used to be the Sierra Grill. And um, when, the Sierra, when the Sierra Grill was open, um, you could, en a, a person in a wheelchair or any kind of mobility issue could enter through the back door. Um, and then when you did that, um, th that's the first floor entrance. So you could, you wouldn't have to use any stairs. You could go to the, through the back door with no stairs. And then you, if you wanted to hang out in the Sierra Grill, you could, but you could also get um, through, the, you could go through the Sierra Grill and onto the elevator, which would take you to either Molino's or Bishop's on the third floor, Bishop's Lounge. <clears throat> and um, so when the Sierra Grill closed, and then a dispensary was built there. They uh, they 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 locked the back door and made it for for person for authorized personnel only. And they also blocked off the elevator on uh, the the entrance to the elevator on the first floor. They had to build a wall over that because um because of CCC rules, uh, Cannabis Control Commission rules, which um, basically you're not allowed to um, have your dispensary connected to other businesses. So they had to build a wall over the elevator there so that people couldn't just get on the elevator and go to Bishops or Molinos. And so basically the only way to get in the building currently is the front entrance, which is three stairs. Um, and, and you can't go through the back door because it's locked at all, at all times. <clears throat> and nobody can enter through there, not even a disabled person. Um, and even if you did enter through the back door, you would only be able to use the first floor dispensary because you wouldn't be able to get to the elevator, basically. Um, and so I, I would also add one thing to correct what Keith said. He said that there was no construction, and, and that's not true. There was actually over $100,000 spent on uh, construction on uh, to, to build the dispensary. 
and when you uh, spend that much money on uh, you know construction without taking accessibility into account, that's a violation of the uh, Architectural Access Board rules. And so 41 Strong Ave was found in violation of those codes. They were found in violation. And so now they are asking us, or they are asking the city or the, the AAB, they're asking for forgiveness basically and to use a portable ramp on the front entrance. And um, so I guess I would just throw in my opinion there. I've never used a portable ramp that steep. Uh, I would never use a ramp that steep for three yeah. stairs. I've used a portable ramp on one stair and sometimes that works. Sometimes that's helpful, but but three stairs, I can't imagine how that would be safe. And so that's just my two cents on that. Um, if anybody has any questions so I can clarify anything. Uh, uh, Jacob? Um, I, I, I think it's, this is, I, I mean, I, I think it's horrible. Um, like, first of all, it's not some nonprofit with a mission that you might consider, you know, bending the rules for. This is a, a for-profit pot shop who has broken the rules and made it less accessible. We're already dealing with so many inaccessible buildings in this town and in this country, and they have actually taken us backwards. And I would recommend, I don't know how much publicity this has gotten, but um, you know, it deserves an article in the Gazette and they deserve to be shamed and boycotted. And that's my, you know, sense of this. I mean, for what it's worth, I totally agree with Jacob, but um, Rodney, you have, go ahead. Rodney, go ahead. Rodney. Go ahead, Rodney. Rodney, we can't hear you. No. 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 <clears throat> no. Now you're on mute. Rodney, try to unmute yourself. Um, now we can hear yeah, you. Okay. I have a question. I have a question. Is the, uh, is, if you put in the ram at the front door, but for the bedroom, as I said, work to put on the ramp to go into the bed that would end. So Rodney's asking if there's a ramp to the front door, would be there would would there be enough room on the sidewalk to build a ramp? Is that correct, Rodney? Yes. If uh thank oh sorry, can I answer? Emma, is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Um, um, that I had the same question as Rodney. Actually, I don't feel like they've fully um, answered that question yet. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how um, it's possible to put a portable ramp there, but not to build a, a permanent ramp there. 
how how is there enough sidewalk space for a permanent or sorry how is there enough sidewalk space for a portable ramp but not a permanent ramp i'm not quite sure and i wish i think that they should answer that yeah. <clears throat> also sorry linda i see you i was um just gonna say that even mm -hmm. with a ramp to the dispensary that doesn't um open access to the other two businesses yeah right um molinas and bishops well Go ahead, Linda. oh sorry Right. Yeah, a few months ago, uh, we went to Molino's. It's very difficult to get up those steps, and there's no handrail. So I emailed Molino's, and I said to them, you know, if you want people to come, and you're making it very difficult for us to even get to the elevator without a handrail, and it wouldn't wouldn't cost much, just a little short handrail, I never heard back. And that used to be a hotel, wasn't it? I don't actually know. Yeah, but, I think it was. Um, yeah. Me. Sorry, pushing all the buttons. <laughs> um, I I have several questions. Um. And I'll, sorry, there, I'll try to, I, I think that in the, in the document that Keith sent, um, they were saying that this temporary ramp does give you access to all the floors. So you can somehow, uh, right? Is that right? Reading it, it said that that is right. Um, um, the the first three the three stairs on the front entrance they they lead up to the elevator. So yeah. if you can get up those stairs, you can get on the elevator. Oh, but, I see. Yeah, sorry, okay. I didn't, I, sorry if that Thank wasn't. You. Clear. Thank yes. you for so, yeah, and I think that they're going to also have like a they're suggesting yeah. a buzzer to buzz if you need to mm -hmm. use the ramp, and they would bring the ramp out to you and set it up there. And I, you know, I would I would. In my opinion, again, like that, that doesn't sound totally safe to me to just have people bring out a ramp and for me to trust them that it's going to be safe. That's just my opinion, but. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's sort of, so yeah, just to answer your question, yes, it does. It would, okay. if you got up there, it would uh, give you access to. Okay, thank yeah. you. Um, so, so Keith, one question back to the MAAB and the applicant would be, um, it said that they would put a ramp out and then they would leave it out so that whoever used it could then leave on their own. And in case of emergency, they could get out of the building. And so my question is, how does that work? Because isn't the ramp fairly long to be able to have the incline not too great so that someone can actually get up the ramp into the building? The ramp, I didn't see dimensions listed on the document, but the ramp has to be fairly long to accomplish that. And so is it just blocking the sidewalk for? The driveway. Hours? Oh, is it in the driveway? It would it would go into the driveway where the big parking lot is. Oh, is is that where the door is? It's on the side. Yeah, Jeremy, is do they do they just want access to the pot shop? Um no, no. We're we're talking about a ramp that would go a portable ramp for the front entrance. So oh. it yeah, and then the front entrance you'd be able to get to the dispensary or Molinos or Bishops using the elevator. And so we're, I guess we're discussing how safe that is though, to, right. or how long the ramp would, how steep the ramp would be in order to fit on the sidewalk. How long it is, how steep it is. And then, and then you're leaving this long ramp out blocking the sidewalk for potentially hours. If someone is, you know, dining for a couple hours, um, so, so that's one question. I don't really understand that. Um, and I have, I have 
-hmm. reservations about the safety, um, the, the situation itself, but about training people to set this up. And so you, uh, it, their plan is that you can call any of the businesses. So whichever business you're going to, and then you get whoever is working that day at that time. And they, I guess, have been trained on how to set this up safely. That um, would make me quite uneasy to um, to trust that all the pieces are in place so that I could get safely up this ramp or my friend or, you know, who, whoever is getting mm. um, any one of the public getting safely up. Mm -hmm. So that that is concerning to me. And then I, I don't know if this question is relevant. So um, if it's inappropriate, please don't include it. But I really am wondering um, why the dispensary is allowed to stay if if the CCC is the problem or the you know the regulations around a dispensary is the problem why is why is that allowed to stay right it seems like the accessible entrance there is a solution and and I don't know if that's me stepping over the you know the line and mm -hmm. um, telling a private business owner the solution when you know, I mean th there could be a, an easy accessible entrance in the back if it was another business there if it was not a dispensary um, that is bound by the CCC regulations and so I, 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 I guess I'm perplexed that um, mm. we're in this predicament um, or that they're mm. in this predicament and asking for a pass. So I, is that an appropriate question to, to, to include back to the MAAB or? I, mean, I don't know if it's germane to their variance really. Um, okay. Uh, and we can bring it up with, I'm sure you bring up the CCC if you wanted, but. Um, I, I think it's an important question. I mean, you're asking what's more important, the CCC rules or the ADA law. And I would say exactly. ADA law. Right. I, uh, that's where, yeah. that's why I feel like it could be relevant, even though it's, you know, it's not the question they're asking, but, you know, a ADA is federal law and they're, they chose to have mm -hmm. this um, renter, um, you know, and it, it's, uh, sorry, and, and for other folks, it, there's one business owner who mm -hmm. owns the building and then he has rented out the spaces to the businesses mm -hmm. that are occupying the the building, so it's not the it, it's not the dispensary that has done this. It is the owner of the whole building. Just for that background, um, Jacob, I. Can Go I ahead. ask a, about the process and everyone else might already know this, but, um, and I understand that I'm just part of the public. I'm not on the commission, but the, the commission will now, or at some point mm -hmm. makes an official up or no like recommendation. And then it goes back to the MAAB and they will take that into account, but make their decision or does the commission, this commission have likes more authority than that if we have questions and comments we can send comments but if the commission wants to make a formal declaration i'm sure you can do that as well um and then that would just you know type it up and send it over to them so right now well, i guess what i mean is who who approves or says no to this variance uh it's, the, the AAB, there's a there's a board, um, and so they they have meetings. Uh, people can attend uh, online, um, and and but they're made up of, you know, like the, the city or not city officials, but uh, state officials, and things like that, and uh, they would kind of make this final decision.
And yeah, that's, um, right. that, that's a meeting that. Oh, yeah, sorry, Jeremy, go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry, Jacob. I'm just going to add a little bit. Um, so that yeah, the, so they already have had a hearing on this, and um, like where people attended, and uh, I testified at the hearing about like how like what I how I felt about the situation, and um, so after that hearing, they didn't make a dis they decided at the at that hearing that they they couldn't make a decision yet because there was too much conflict conflicting information that they had to like just they had to look look into it further basically um so they 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 haven't made their decision their final decision yet and um so i think that that, that they're asking for the disability commission to sort of help them make their decision and that i don't know if that helps answer your question or not but so i think that's what they're asking for us to sort of just like help form their opinion Is that is that helpful? Yeah, thanks. That that mm -hmm. does help. And will there be another publicly attendable hearing about I'm, this? I'm actually not sure. Um, I can ask the, um, Tom Murphy about that. He's the lawyer who's um, he works at the Disability Law Center here in Northampton, and he um, he might know the answer to that question. So I'll, I can ask him and get back to you. But there could be. I'm not sure. Yeah, Kathy. And I think just looking at the drawings for the ramp, I'm curious. I assume that the slope of the ramp does conform to ADA specifications, given that it looks like a manufactured ramp. But also looking mm -hmm. at the length of it, I'm not sure that even, even if we were considering mm -hmm. whether allowing a person to put up a temporary ramp is okay or not. I'm not sure one person could do it given the length of the ramp. So how, if this is even a proposal that we thought were feasible, is it even feasible the way they're going about it? Because it seems like given the size, you'd need at least two people. And of course, then there's still always the, that person's gonna be sick or you know whatever. Like I know I, I was at the hearing, so I know that they did say they would train everybody, but. You know, the fact of the matter is not everybody's going to be able to handle this kind of task. So um, I think the temporary ramp obviously creates lots of issues. And and I think Amy's point about, you know, is the tenant really suitable for that building is is a good one, even though it might be out of our purview, possibly. Jeremy? Well, thanks. I just wanted to um, kind of uh, add to what Kathy said uh, and Amy um, about um, like what like a, a, like when you're leave, what about when you're leaving the building and there's like you are you gonna also have to go find the same people to help you out or are you gonna be left to your, by yourself to go down the ramp by yourself when you're leaving the building? They didn't really answer that question. I feel like that's a safety issue that should definitely be answered. Because are we gonna be expected to go down the ramp by ourselves with no assistance from anybody, or is there gonna be somebody there to help us when we're ready to leave? Yeah, Amy, go ahead. I, I'm pretty sure it was written in the document that um, you were on your own to leave, that you could um, leave at your own will, or if there was an emergency, you could get out. Yeah. So it, it, it didn't sound like um, assistance was part of the plan. So right now, the questions that I have uh, written down that I guess we could put in a uh, document to them. Um, uh, does it block the driveway, the sidewalk, and, and for how long? That's one of the things that the city doesn't want. Is it blocking the sidewalk? So what does that look like? If it is blocking the driveway, there's going to be some access issues with the other th the tenants in the back. Um, how are you going to safely train train people to safely ensure the employees can set the ramp? Is it physically possible to do it with one or two people? Um, and shouldn't the MAB, MAB, which is informed by the federally mandated ADA, supersede the CC rules for separating businesses? Um, and then it seems like there's general concerns about the steepness of the ramp. Um, and I mean, 
I would say metal ramp in the rain. I don't know if that's grip, but um, there might be some um, you know, moisture issues, but not sure what the if there's a grip surface on it. Yeah. Are there um, other questions or comments that people want to put into this these notes that Keith is taking for us? Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I feel like the general feeling is that a lot of a lot of us feel very skeptical of the proposal <laughs> or the 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 application um for variance and um I'm curious and no one's brought it up and maybe this is an outsider perspective but I mean how do people feel about having a special treatment you know having to press a button to have another thing happen and basically you're waiting on you know I mean that's that's another sorry I didn't mean to interrupt but that's an excellent point yeah uh, that's another factor for sure to have to to have to be like you know sit out there and wait while somebody comes and, and uh, yeah that's that's not not good at all <clears throat> Especially Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Like any, no. Especially if there's any kind of weather, like snow, where it's really hot, having somebody like have to wait in that is not ideal. Jacob, I mean, isn't the spirit spirit of a variance to deal with like an old building mm -hmm. that? you know, has been grandfathered in and it's really difficult to make accessible mm -hmm. and we, you know, want to allow for those buildings to have some purpose and use, et cetera. Not for a building that already had mm -hmm. an elevator and already had access so that a pot shop could be put in. It just feels like an absolute abuse and it feels like offensive. And I feel mm -hmm. like, I don't know how strong the language can be, and maybe this is not the right place for strong language, but mm -hmm. I think strong language is worth, wor this is worth strong language. You know, it is mm -hmm. like treating, it, it is, uh, I think I'll leave it there. I, but that that is my sense. I, I find I'm offended on my son's behalf and on people's behalf and I'm on my own behalf. I mean, you know, I one day I'm probably going to be old and need a cane and a walker. So let's all we're all in this together. It's ridiculous. Here, here, <laughs> Kathy. And I, I, I like Molino's food. I feel like it's a wasted elevator in the building that you can't get into the building to use the elevator. And like Linda, I have trouble mm. getting upstairs. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, I'm walking, so I can only imagine how frustrating it is, you know, when you can't even conceive of getting into that building, knowing there's an elevator in it that could get you up to the third floor if you could just do it. That's all. Amy? to tag on, which is why I brought up that awkward question of how can the dispensary be allowed to stay there as a tenant when that is the, mm -hmm. the feasible, accessible entrance? Like, it was approved by someone. <clears throat> It doesn't make sense. And I feel like that should be part of the feedback, yeah. you know, in perhaps question format is why is the dispensary allowed to stay as a tenant when that is the solution? Because their current solution is is not acceptable. 100%. And, and you know, we have so many ground floor level pot dispensaries. Why'd they even, what were they thinking? 
Yeah. Do they have special pot? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I completely agree, and uh, if I could just add one one quick thing is just I just wanted to. I'm sure some people might already know this in here, but like last year when we held our rally, and we had a march and a rally. Uh, we marched through Northampton and had a rally at Pulaski Park, raising awareness to the rights of all disabled people. And this was this situation was the impetus for our march and our rally was we were demonstrating what happened to that building when they took accessibility away. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm noticing the time and um, wondering if we should try to wrap up this conversation for now, if anybody has any final thoughts. Um, but it seems like we have collected some good notes. Uh, Emma, it looked like uh, Maria had a hand up. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Maria. Oh, that's okay. I just, hi. And I just wanted to say, um, yeah, like just piggybacking on Amy and Jacob and Jeremy that um, like Jeremy's, what he had said at the public hearing. And then as you just said, Jeremy in the protest, um, I think it is really important, like th that use of rhetoric and also like how the, that building had been accessible and it really is just like the one tenant um, choosing to do that one thing so maybe like in your notes Keith or whatever you all end up submitting that like it's not like a big grand problem of the building it really did come down to this kind of one decision and that you know you've been outlining for the past year like that you had been able to get like people have been able to access the building um, you know for years so I just feel like that's important and that you've been advocating that for a while um, so I just yeah I just felt like that was important. Thank you. Um, anything else? Um, I do we go until five or five thirty? We don't really have a cutoff time, but. We've gone usually at about five to five fifteen, somewhere in there. Okay. Um, the next thing on the agenda was um at our previous meeting we talked about having um the DPW director, Donna Lascalia, invited to one of our future commission meetings. Um and um, Keith, have you been able to extend an invitation? Uh, I mean, we have we don't have any questions right now. Um, I was hoping people could, um, okay, um, kind of send uh, a collection of questions, and I could kind of apprise her what it'd be about. Um. Yeah. Last time I've talked to her, uh, I believe she wanted some more detail, like not like paragraph, but just a summary of kind of what we were thinking to uh, talk to her about. Totally. Um. So maybe the move is just to email you any questions that we have for her about the sidewalks. Um, and repair. Like, how do we? What are the steps to get the sidewalks repaired? Um, and maybe just send them to Keith so that um, Donna and Lascalia can like pr actually prepare for this meeting. Amy, go ahead. Sorry, I'm gonna throw a, a wrench into things <laughs> and propose another process. Um, I was wondering if um, if Emma, you and I could reach out to to Donna Lascalia and ask for a meeting with her um, with the gathered questions from everyone here. 
so that we can have a conversation with her, gather information, um, let her know we're, you know, we're in this together, we're on the same page, see if we can brainstorm um, things that the commission can do to support the sidewalks being updated, like um, trying to find other funding, you know, like reaching out to other folks who, I, I don't know, like just, you know, to have that conversation and then yeah. bring, it, bring all that information back to, sorry, my son is getting boots off in the background, mm -hmm. um, to, to bring that information back to the commission and share all that information and kind of go from there. I feel like that might be a yeah, I love, and maybe more productive way to go. Yeah, I love that idea. Um, as long as the rest of the commission feels comfortable with that, with that. Um, but yeah, I think that's a great idea. Maybe folks could still send Keith questions, and Keith could hand them off to us. What what do other people think about that plan versus the the other one? You mean just the two of you meet with her? It might be easier to get her, and then just bring the questions or concerns. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, but I just wanted to see if other people were comfortable with that, or yeah, or not. Yeah, you you two will do a great job. <laughs> feels like it'll be more conversational and you could have more of a back and forth and since this is a public yeah. space she might be anxious about i don't know whatever it, it, it's harder in a public space to be a public official <laughs> or something i i would really love questions from you know everyone who has them so that it's not just the questions that Emma and I might have about this process and what we know about it. So um, I know it's one more thing to add to your plate, but if you could take a moment to email Keith, um, that would be awesome. Amy, do you want us to email the questions to Keith or to you? Um, I guess to Keith, I was wondering, I'm happy to share my email and chat if it doesn't go out to the public. Like I know this is being recorded and so I don't know how that works, but so I guess for now through Keith and then does that work? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I I think that would be like the proper procedure <laughs> for to rate. <laughs> Thank <Yes>. you. <laughs> um great. Um so the next thing is any other business not anticipated. Um if anyone has anything. Yeah, Amy. Sorry, does anyone else have anything before I keep blabbing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I do have two quick things. Um, one, I was curious, Keith, about the um, Terrace Trails site visit, if there's a date for that that you had mentioned in December. Uh, there's not a date. Uh, we just got in contact. Our court uh, has been the coordinator for that. Um, so he has been in contact with College Church, who abuts the property um to maybe uh use like their facility to start the you know um and then we're still waiting on stravros um they so as part of the chi award stavro you have we have to partner with a independent living center which is stavros um and so uh we just want to make sure that they can be on site um and be part of that uh but as soon as i get the date i will send it out and um yeah um so we don't have to you know so if we um just if we do go um we 
we just have to be careful that we don't violate open meeting law. So basically, um, what they call a serial conversation. So even if there is not a quorum of people, um, if you guys are on site, um, you should limit the amount of talking you do amongst the other members um, because that technically could be a violation. But you're free to talk with court and you know, any other, other members of the public and whoever is there. So. And but we can talk I, socially, just not. Yes. <laughs> yes. You, you can keep your um, human, um, all your yeah. human elements. Um, but regardless of whenever that meeting happens, we would want to um, have a conversation at the Disability Commission after that meeting so we can kind of go it over because not everyone can go. Um, you know, it's a semi accessible space uh, uh, trail, but there's definitely some. I mean, we're trying to make it accessible, but it's not. Uh, I mean, um, there's some issues with it. So. It's okay. so very snowy right now. <laughs> a little tricky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. And I have a second thing, Emma, if that's okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so the second thing, um, I just spoke with um, Karen Foster, who's the executive director of All Out Adventures. And she had this really, I think, a really cool proposition of All Out Adventures, um, the Disability Commission, um, Friends of Northampton Trails, and two of the local bicycle groups um, to potentially co-sponsor showing this movie. It's a documentary called Go On, Be Brave. And I can send things to you, Keith, to send out to folks if, um, if people would like more information. It's a documentary about this woman who was diagnosed with ALS at 33 years old. And she had been an ultra marathon triathlete, something like that. Um, and so then she had the goal of riding her recumbent trike in a marathon in all 50 states. And she, I think, recently completed that. And so they made this documentary and there's a, the, the documentary is being premiered um, mid-January. And so then in 51 cities, but you can also do showings, you know, in your town. Um, and so uh, Karen's idea was, you know, that these groups, we could come together and help um, show this documentary somewhere in town, um, you know, spring, summer, I don't know, you know, no details have been discussed or worked out. But um, so I just wanted to share that with the commission to see if we were interested in in being on board and being a part of making that happen. Hmm. So um I could send stuff. I don't I don't know if there's you know we, we I should send stuff to you Keith and then you could send it out to people and then we decide at the next meeting. What do you all what is that what do you think Emma? Yeah, I mean, I yes, I think that you should totally send things to Keith to send to all of us. Um, and then, yeah, maybe we can put it on the agenda for the next meeting to talk about if people are interested in doing this. But I mean, I think it sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. It's always good to like build relation relationships with other groups of people. Any other immediate reactions or do people want to get information first? Sounds good. Um, is there any other business or anyone have anything else that they want to bring bring up? No, in which case I would Here's the picture of it. Go on, be brave. Awesome. <laughs> See it? Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 
Looks good. Yeah. It was nice when everybody came to the crypt camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. It'd be cool to plan another event like that sometime. It, it would. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if um, people would want to do the showing like before Disability Pride Month, but which is July, but that could be a film for that month. <laughs> Mm. Definitely. If no one has any other business, um, I would motion to adjourn our meeting. I'll second that. There was no first motion. And oh, I thought that oh, I thought that Emma made a motion. No, she's Sorry. entertaining a motion. She's entertaining. I'll make the motion to adjourn. I can second it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> See you all February 13th.